Today we're exploring Chilean wine. But before we hit the road, let's get some basic information about Chile as a wine country. Chile is over 2,700 miles long and is never more than 200 miles wide. Hence, every major wine region in the country lies relatively close to the sea. From ancient times, this country was shaped by nature. Chilean terroirs are the result of this antique interaction between the Pacific Ocean and the Andes Mountains. And don't forget the frequent earthquakes that shake this country quite regularly. Chile's unique combination of geography and climate make it ideal for wine growing. A viticulture paradise with hot, sunny days, chilly nights, little rain and cooling breezes. Wine history started here around 470 years ago with the arrival of the Spanish conquistadores. These soldiers brought wine seeds with them from Europe and rapidly introduced these species to the native land. The Mission Grey variety, known here as Pais, was widely planted during this time. After Chile gains its independence in 1822 from Spain, a wine agriculture school was established. French and Italian immigrants began improving and expanding the vineyards. In 1860, the phylloxera epidemic almost destroyed half of all the vineyards in Europe. Chile's naturally geographical isolation kept its vines out of danger, making its wines popular abroad. Actually, this was the first time the European palates tasted Chilean wines. The country is still famous today for being the only wine-producing region free of phylloxera in the world. We will continue our wine trip in Chile. We're going to visit the Great Maipo Valley. This is Chile's top wine area and also its oldest. Situated just south of Santiago within the Central Valley, this sub-region has warm weather cooled by the Andes and is a very popular destination for wine tourists. Actually, you can get here taking the tube. It is often described as the Bordeaux of South America. Rich, fruit-driven Cabernet Sauvignon and Merlot blend is the signature wine style of the region. The first vineyards were planted along the Maipo River in the 16th century, making this region one of the oldest wine-growing areas in South America. The vineyards of Alto Maipo run along the eastern edge of the Andes Mountains, where they benefit from altitudes between 400 to 700 meters above the sea level. At this height, warm sun during the day is followed by cool nights, which create slow ripening. This extends the growing season, leading to grapes with a balance of ripeness and acidity. Alto Maipo's soils are rocky with alluvial sand and volcanic materials. They are free draining and are considered excellent for viticulture. Vines have to work harder to get water in the ground. And as a result of this, they produce smaller berries with a high concentration of sugars and acids, which make wine simply irresistible. Viña Concha y Toro was established in 1883 by Don Melchor de Concha y Toro. A successful Chilean businessman would travel to Bordeaux to get vine cuttings from local vineyards and brought them back to his estate in the Maipo Valley. Concha Toro is one of the world's most powerful wine brands, which has a market cap worth one billion pounds. They export about 80% of the production in 145 countries around the world. Concha Toro is also taking the lead in several categories of sustainability, not only in Chile, but globally as well. In 2015, they opened a 5 million pound wine research and innovation center in the Maule Valley, which includes a nursery and facilities for education and conferences. In 2010, they were the first winery in the world to measure its water footprint. Marcelo Papa is a winemaker at Concha y Toro. He is responsible for the company's successful Casillero del Diablo brand. 
With his team, Papa oversees the production of over 4 million cases of wine across a 12-strong range, which includes a Cabernet Sauvignon, a Sauvignon Blanc and a Carmenere. In addition to this, Papa also is a custodian of the Marquise de Casa Concha brand, which includes a Chardonnay, a Pinot Noir and a Syrah. Now, let's talk with this great winemaker. How does it feel to work for the most famous and powerful wine brand in the world? Oof. Well, I think there is a fantastic opportunity. It's a, it's a great opportunity to make a thousand of bottles of wine and arrive to the consumers and, uh, and see and get the feedback from consumers from uh, many places in the world. Uh, it's great, it's, it's simply great. We're in Maipo today, uh, and I want to know what's your philosophy behind your Maipo wine? Maipo, Maipo it's a, we are located very close to the Andes Mountain. We are really on the, on the foothills of the Andes, Mount, or Andes Mountain. You could feel it, it's very, the, the light is, you could see this, yeah. it's great. It's very dry, uh, no humidity. The soils are very rocky and very poor. So the wine has a, a great expression, my, particularly the, Cab the Cabernet Sauvignon. Cabernet Sauvignon. Okay. So my philosophy is I don't want to touch that aromas, natural aromas, and I, I try to put those aromas here in the bottle, in the bottle as natural yeah. as possible. So that is, at the end, my philosophy. Okay. Mm -hmm. Lately, you know, I've been tasting wine in the UK, your wines, yes. and I've noticed that your wines start to, you know, taste more fresher, less oak. In a way, I'm thinking that using maybe some techniques from the 70s or going back a yeah. little bit to old terms. Is it right? Is it wrong? I think it's quite right. Uh, I think that uh, in wine there are sometimes a little bit of fashion. Okay. So 20 years ago, 15 years ago, the fashion was to make very power, dark, uh, kind of blockbuster style of wines. Uh, now the fashion is, is changing a little bit. Uh, people uh, eat uh, lighter, yeah. uh, make more sport. So I think that wines I'm doing, or my feeling is that yeah. I'm doing wine with uh, less oak, uh, fresher, a little bit less alcohol. Yeah. So a little bit more fashion, but also very contemporary. Okay, yeah. very modern. Very modern, very I modern. think so, yeah. Right. Food and wine matching. Do you know, I love the subject, you know, and I want to know your opinion. Is food and wine matching important for Chileans? or is something just on the side that you don't care much? No, I think that for Chileans it's very important. Uh, think that in Chile we are producing wine more than 400 years. Yeah. Uh, so in every farm or house, always you will find a bottle of wine, good wine, bad wine, but wine at the end, uh, matching with food. Uh, of course, in the last years, uh, there are kind of sophistication, so okay. right, uh, where you start to think more, okay, this Maipo Cabernet will match very good with a piece of lamb or, okay. or a red meat or whatever, but uh, it's always good. Yeah. And lastly, what do you think in your opinion, we're in Maipo, one of the oldest areas in Chile, right. what is the future for Chilean wines? I think that the future for Chilean wine, it's a little bit, take the example of Maipo, which in one area, after 100 years, uh, after planting many different varieties, yeah. uh, we are arriving at, okay, uh, Maipo, it's an excellent area for Cabernet Sauvignon or wines based on Cabernet. Cabernet Sauvignon. So I think that uh, Chile has a great diversity. Uh, we have coast, we have south, north. Uh, it, it, it has a rich diversity where we could find the, the best varieties for every uh, area. And that is a kind of definition that we need to do for the future. And that it will be a, a key factor for the success. Now we're ready for some wine tasting. Excellent. So where are we going? Starting with we this, with the other? This one, which is more blend, right? Okay. And I would take a little bit too. Okay, so classic wine from Maipo. Yep. Uh, if you see the color, yep. it's a great color, ruby. It's a very uh, alive uh, yeah, color. Yeah, I can see very bright. Very, yeah. very bright and, and clean. And then uh, 
on the aromas you will find the classic aromas from my but that you will find the other wine yeah. a lot of uh, cassis black yeah. currant black currant cassis and yeah. um, uh, dark plums right? yeah uh, oak not much very well integrated i don't smell much oak no that a little is the idea. bit it's good right right it's right good. and then if you taste What do you feel? Wow, it's very refreshing. I have the cassis and yeah. everything, but it's really juicy. Very juicy, uh, very soft, and um, very fresh. But vibrant, huh? I feel of stuff. Course, yeah. It's not a light wine. Yeah. I don't think that I should describe this as a light wine, but it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a lighter kind of style of a powerful yeah. You say. know what I like from this wine? Two things. One is it, it has the classic aromas of Maipo, which yeah. I like very much. And the second one, when you drink the first glass, you want the second one. Immediately. <laughs> Immediately. <laughs> That's good, huh? Yeah, good. That's good. <laughs> this is a Marquez, which is another range of uh, wine. Okay. And um, this one is uh, mainly pure Cabernet Sauvignon. Pure Cabernet. Okay. With a little bit of Petit Verdot and, and Cabernet Franc. But it doesn't matter, it's just dash. Okay. And uh, this Cabernet is from this area. Maipo uh, has different levels of altitude. Okay. And this Cabernet is coming from the highest part. Okay. So over 700 meters over the sea level. So it's a really beautiful area where the cassis aromas are yeah. more intense and more clean. Uh, the black currant is, is fantastic. Okay. Less plums, yeah. more cassis. And it's actually nice. you can see that the color is different already. Yeah, also, it's, it's uh, more concentrated. It's more concentrated, yeah. but remember, not bulk yeah. So elegant, uh, mm. fine grains, uh, really nice uh, Cabernet. You're right, huh? Yeah, the cassis is it's there. absolutely it's there. clear. Yeah. yeah. Oak, no a little, oak, a yeah. little bit. And the wine is barrel aging, but uh, the percentage of new oak is really, really low, yeah. and the wines get a, a nice uh, complex excellent. Mm. If you compare this one with the previous, this is a little bit more tense. Yes. Um, I feel a little bit of tannins as well. Yes, there are more mm. presence of tannins because the other one was a blend. Yeah. And uh, this is Cabernet, pure Cabernet, almost pure Cabernet. Mm. So more tense, more tannins, uh, vibrant. I think it's, no, it's, it's amazing. It's great. Yeah, it's amazing. It's pretty good. I love it. Good. Cheers, Marcelo. Cheers. After our amazing tasting, we were super hungry, and since we are in the Maipo Valley, we should have a classic, asado al palo. Basically what we're gonna do, we're gonna attach the animal, the whole body, uh, and this is, I don't know how it's gonna work, but we're gonna kind of stretch the animal here in order to put it into the fire next. So this is a really kind of key moment to put it right. So, as you can see, we have the animal here. So what Julio wants now is to get a little bit of smoky character we get in kind of the, the part of the wood from the box to get into the animal. We're not cooking yet. This is just smoking the lamb, you know? This is a traditional way to cook lamb, taking more than three hours to prepare. The idea is not to rush the process of cooking. Actually, it's the opposite. We enjoy a delicious South American infusion called mate while we were preparing our table for lunch with some exquisite salads and the famous Chilean sauce called pebre. After more than three hours, our lamb was ready. The intensity of the flavors of the grilled meat was fantastic. Our two wines match perfectly with it. My Maipo trip has been truly spectacular.